Forty chess. Yeah. Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Let's get it. Yo, is that T Dog? Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Hey. Hey. Forty chess. This a trade show. Patreon where the trades go. Tap in and watch. That's what you came for. Ain't gotta say my name. They know my name, bro. What's good, man? We got McNutted in ATM. Always start off the show with a trade from them. You should always make sure that your trade is in. Patreon, why not be a Patreon? Know you wish you could spend every day with them. Tap in and say what you gonna say with them. Stop home and can fill up a stadium. Next time you log in, make sure that you bring a friend. We about to kick off at the day begin. Go follow the socials. 40 chess FF is posted. If your trade is an F, you get roasted. Go like and subscribe for the crew. Apple, Spotify, and the YouTube. You know Cooper got the wall too. Let us give you a walkthrough. 40 chess. This is 40 chess. What's good, everybody? Welcome back into the 4D Chess Dynasty Football Podcast. So glad you could join us and look at him live on location. I'm underwater. Kentucky. Yeah. Looks I was like telling I got- him right before we came on, it looks like, uh, he looks like I just got out of a swimming pool and I had a bunch of chlorine in my eyes. You know, he'd been swimming all day. <laughs> he gets that little blur. I got the, I got the <laughs> overhead light here just shining right on me, giving me a nice glow and no other lights. So we're making it work, baby. You do what you got to do, man. Uh, it's yeah. a good Friday edition of Dang. the 40 Chess Dynasty. Live. Live. On YouTube. Just put it out there. Just, Absolutely. You got to tap in live, man. Get this one out of the way, man. And then everybody gets to have a nice long weekend. It's pretty exactly. awesome. Nice having a good Friday, way. you know? It is. It we makes got it Fizzle a here. We got, we got everybody here, man. Let's Gerard Mayo it. says, hopefully I get roasted today. I promise, buddy, if you stay till tomorrow uh, morning. You got roasted. We, not even 24 hours, you're in there. Um, so <laughs> I was actually going to reach out to him and be like, I was going to reach out to him and be like, hey, are, are you cool with kind of how we went down with things at the end? I'm going to let you find out on uh, just live now, Gerard. I, f- I feel like you'll be a good sport about it. Ty DeClaire is here. Yeah. And we got uh, new to best ball in a startup just drafted, Connor. Uh, we're going to probably try to stay away from questions for real. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll get into maybe a couple, but, uh, maybe a couple. You can, you can start them. Adam, what we're going to talk about is uh, how dynasty startups have evolved over the uh, the time frame. So uh, one of the cool tools out there to use is you can go back and look at DLF startup ADP from, you know, the oldest one I found, Adam, was uh, July of 2018. So that's kind of where we're going to start, go through the years and see exactly what has changed all the way up till now, and then talk about some of the differences, like uh, yep. how things have changed for us playing dynasty and uh, see maybe if we can get ahead of some of the trends, right? Like yeah. uh, I imagine in 2018, if I told you the ADP would look like it does now in 2024, you'd be like, "You're crazy, man! No way!" So, yep. I know now here in the moment it's hard to see, but uh, maybe we can uh, we can uncover one or two where we go. Maybe you might want to start getting in this direction already. <laughs> I love that stuff on your team. But speaking of which, Mike, uh, with the small screen here, I'm gonna need you to be the driver on. Um, reading that ADP out for me. I'll be, oh, I'll be following you, along. I got you, buddy. No problem. So, Let's do it. Uh, 2018 July startup ADP for Superflex Dynasty Leagues. Just so we're clear, this is Superflex. This is Superflex. The people who are doing these, uh, I believe they're mocks, and I think there was four of them listed at this time, knew they were Superflex, <laughs> meaning a quarterback. But, it, hey, hey, we'll just uh, we'll go with what they were doing back then, Adam. Yep. <laughs> you know. Uh, if I'm the quarterbacks, it's uh, it's definitely that Mike Jones thing, right? Back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, su- Superflex, uh, even 2020, Mike, I remember some really good quarterbacks going yes. like the third round. But let's let's get into yeah. it, man. Uh, number one pick in Odell Beckham, OBJ. What year is this again? 2018. Wow. July of 2018. One overall. Holy crap. Todd Gurley. He was a beast. You know. uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Ezekiel Elliott, Antonio Brown, David Johnson, Saquon Barkley, Aaron Rodgers, number one quarterback off the board, 
2018. And that was Not in the first? The eighth pick. Eight, eighth overall, okay. Eighth pick. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Le'Veon Bell, Michael Thomas, and Russell Wilson. So only two quarterbacks in the entirety of a first-round Superflex dynasty startup. Aaron Rodgers was the 108. That's crazy. In Russ. <laughs> Russ coming in at the 112. Danger, Russ. <laughs> Granted, there was a they had they had a lot of years left, but both of them uh, was Russ over, Russ was over thirty then too, right? No, he's thirty five now. Yeah, this is six years ago. <laughs> okay, so all right, twenty twenty eighteen, twenty four now. It's true. <laughs> I'm no math expert, but <laughs> it's true. Thirty five minus six is not thirty. <laughs> he's gonna be he's gonna be thirty when the season starts. Okay, Love it. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Thirty. We're drafting thirty-year-old quarterbacks in the first round. The only, the only we guys, are. you know. Uh, Rogers was thirty. What thirty-four? Well, yeah, well Jesus. into his thirties. He's forty now. We treat Dak like he's dead. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say, man. What's going on with Dak now? But he's but. over. Uh, kick off the second round. You had Kareem Hunt. Wow. Carson Wentz, Devontae Adams. Keenan Allen, Dalvin Cook, Leonard Fournette, Mike Evans, Deshaun Watson, Julio Jones, and Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon, Joe Mixon, Cam Newton. There we go. There's uh, 24 picks. So Cam Newton is five quarterbacks now off the board in the first two rounds. Five. We get five in the first five picks. (laughs) Crazy. Crazy. You had 11 running backs, Adam, and... Seven wide receivers going the first two rounds. Eleven running backs. Yeah, I mean that, that's going to be the main theme as we start each year, right? The running backs probably start dipping after twenty-one. I'm gonna guess. It might not be till twenty-two, but twenty-two. We, we gotta we gotta be approaching. We gotta it. we gotta we got ways to find out. Uh, through three rounds, Adam, you had nine quarterbacks. Um, let me look then to. Through four rounds, we had 12. Jesus. Through five rounds, you finally had 16 quarterbacks. So basically. What do you think we're at, do you think we're at now even with those like those I, mid-rounds? Like how many quarterbacks are off before, you know, through round I actually five? Think, I actually think that part stayed the same. I think Goff is right around there, and he's a fifth-round pick. So it's just they go significantly earlier on the high end. I'll pull up ADP yeah. on South Harmon right now just to yeah. double check. I'll give I'll give you context based on the current give one. Give you another uh, another yeah. tab here so I can look at it. But so Mike, so Goff is let's see. Goff is coming yeah. off fifteen yeah. quarterbacks through five rounds. Yep. P- pretty close. Right, Actually, you. Mike, we're we're at uh I'm looking with the rookies included, not the picks. So are those with picks or are they with rookies on there? Do that was you, just you, with picks. You throw rookies in there. Oh, baby. Yeah, you're looking at 18 quarterbacks. Okay. So a few more. So it's the same It's the same with uh, the rookies here. But, yeah, so 411 is quarterback 15. So it's an extra – we're a round higher now. We've moved up a round overall. A few more. A few more, but not not a ton. The, the main thing uh, is that they're – The main thing is the first couple rounds, though, right? Like – it's littered with first round quarterbacks now. Conversely, you had twenty one wide receivers through five rounds. What are we at now? Just nowadays. With the picks, uh at the five twelve, so we got twenty one. T Higgins twenty one. And running backs. Jeez. I bet there's not this many running backs. We have eleven through five, Mike. <laughs> twenty. <laughs> twenty in the yeah. whole DLF ADP. All right, well, let's go on to 2019. Let me see what they did in uh, 2019 if they got a little bit uh, sharper, you know. Uh, okay, 2019 speak. ADP. I kept it of July. I'm going to keep it of July. Okay. Just moving forward here. Okay. Because uh, that was the first one I could find on DLF, and we'll just keep it all July going forward. Right in the heart after rookie drafts, you get the the rookies added in, yada, yada, yada. So uh, we finally have a quarterback, number one, though, super flex. Patrick Mahomes, one hundred and one. So that's, it didn't take that's him a change. Long. It took took him one season. <laughs> I mean, most of them st- don't start going yet, but uh, we got at least somebody up there. Let's go. We did it slowly did but it, surely. Man. You know. Uh, how about this though? Running backs: uh, Saquon and Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Ezekiel Elliott. Boom, boom, boom! In succession. 
We still wanted them running backs, baby. <laughs> Need them, yeah. want them. We we, we were them. we were fighting in twenty two, so I'm not surprised on the running backs, right? Uh, we got a couple more quarterbacks in the first round: Deshaun Watson and Andrew Luck. So QB two and QB three. Man, how Think times have that, changed! How times have changed! Yeah, twenty nineteen. We got a, retired a younger guy, retired guy and another guy that might as well be retired based on how people treat him. You know. <laughs> Uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, previous year's QB1, he only slipped to four. Not too bad, huh? To four? Okay. Yep. So he went at the uh, 203. Baker Mayfield. Now, you and I were talking about this. Baker Mayfield. What was Baker's rookie year? Was this his uh, 2018? 2018. So, so he so was coming off in a, a pretty good 2018 rookie season, right? Like, how, he set some records. How high are you about right? to say? Yeah, he did. He did as a rookie. He set some records. Uh, fifth quarterback off the board, 205. Wow, that's that's I would not have guessed that, buddy. That's crazy to me. Well, is it that crazy? It's just crazy because, in relative to the quarterback position, is it that crazy? Because look at what CJ Stroud just did this past year. And well, where but, he's going now. But what's life. Baker Mayfield off the board as far as QBs right now? Right now, where Baker is? Uh, in this draft, what what quarterback was he off the draft? You said he was at the QB second five. round. QB yeah, five. QB5. I mean, that's basically what CJ Stroud feels like. He had a much better rookie season and more hype than Baker did. That, I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. CJ Stroud's going at three, but, but we also let like our Baker feelings come in. Baker had a very, very good rookie year. I think he, he set the rookie touchdown record at the twenty-seven. Time. Yeah, yeah, yep. And subsequently broken. Right, we had Justin Herbert, and then you had CJ Stroud's like rookie seasons, which were also very good. But Baker was the first guy, like in in dynasty ADP wise. To set the the rookie quarterback, and we're talking about super flex leagues where people still trying to figure this shit out. I see a QB five like, poof, let me get Baker, man. I mean, I I can see it. I can, I guess I can see it now. But going back in time, like I you know living in Cleveland, no, being as close to Baker, I never felt right. like the community was really that in on him. But all right, I mean maybe maybe for a little glimpse in home, a glimpse in time, you know. They got real in on him. Um, through four or for through the first two rounds though he is he is the last quarterback to go he's QB five like five quarterbacks through two rounds but see so that's we, the crazy part Mahomes went all we, the way to one hundred one but we haven't really learned all that much honestly no 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 we kind of got in the one hundred one really throws it all much. off we didn't really learn shit really right we just we pretended like we did at the top uh, Carson Wentz shout out to that right QB six <laughs> off the board. So let man just think about that though, Mike. This is now when ATM math. This is five years ago now. All right, we have yeah. retired. I mean, not retired, but can't get a job, right? And Wentz. These are the top ten quarterbacks. That's cr- like think about some of those. Baker's now falling out of favor, but back in the mix. At what is he like nineteen currently? I'll pull up the uh, yeah. startup again. Um, right now, Adam, looking at this one. They have 17 quarterbacks in the top 60 picks, so the top five rounds. Okay, 17. So, so we kind of hanging right around that number. Yeah, it's it just is. They, it, it's not like a lot more are going to go in the top five rounds. It's just they're going to go higher. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so we keep going on the years, right? Like we Correct. keep moving them up and up and up. Correct. Their uh, their top ceiling value becomes more and more. So 21 running backs, still a shit ton of running backs through the first five rounds, and. 19 wide receivers. How about uh, the trend, though? Like, I just want to look at the top three rounds. How many How many wide receivers do we have going in the top three rounds yeah, of that's, Dynasty startups right now? Cause we got 12, weird. Mike. We got 12. Okay. Back in uh, 2019, you had 13. Wow. Now, what about the first two? We got eight. In the first two rounds, uh, seven. All right. Seven. So, actually pretty similar, man. The more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> Interesting. I think that's a Interesting. Good scene, right? the, what, now, keep in mind, about, though, Mike. How about, keep how about in the mind running the, backs? How about well, the running, backs, ba- the the running backs are going to be wildly different. So, first two rounds, we have four. Yeah, we got 11. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Do you you got to get, like, to round five before you get 11 running backs even off the board, don't it's you? It's exactly 11 at 512. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. Josh Jacobs barely ties it at the 512. Barely. We have buried that position. Buried that position. All right, let's go look at 2020. COVID. COVID year. Dynasty explosion. This is going to be a fun one to look back at, man, because inside of five years, like, 
realistically, it's not that long ago. Wait till you see how much difference there is here. I think a lot of people will remember these startups. Like yes. this is when a lot of people got into Dynasty. Well, leagues, COVID, but... COVID really probably juiced the Dynasty number. So, the so start before, of it. before we actually look at it, just hypothetically follow along with me, right? All so right. you get Superflex kind of burst on the scene in, in 2018. We'll kind of give it that, right? Okay. Enough so that DLF says we need to start doing mock drafts and tracking drag the ADP. ADP, right? right. Before that, they didn't care. <laughs> 2019, you kind of see that shift, right? All of a sudden, they, they elevate Patrick Mahomes off that year up to the number one overall pick. 2020, we head into it in COVID, and I think a lot of people kind of transitioned or really got into Dynasty Leagues. You saw the explosion in like how much more content there was, how much more right. uh, startup drafts and people doing leagues, and like Dynasty took off. Now, here's my theory, Adam. If we didn't have COVID, oh, hitting the mic, if we didn't have COVID in 2020, like that wasn't a thing, right? I'm not saying Dynasty wouldn't have eventually gotten to the place it would have, but I'm saying the ADP would have looked vastly different, right? Like, because you had the people who were kind of in on the ground floor and they were learning over time, like they were getting better and better. And it feels like a lot of the COVID crowd came in and was like, yeah, we're going to fuck this up, <laughs> right? I'm so used to redraft. I'm so used to fucking seasonal or one QB running backs to come back right and we saw that push not only with that draft but then uh we pull up adp here you're gonna see christian mccaffrey's the number one player yeah i was actually what i'm gonna do too mike uh i'm gonna run in the backgrounds here so this is the 2020 startup draft so i'm gonna pull up warp in 2019 like each year subsequently to see how much the reaction of last year's scoring can maybe influence Change things it. too yep yep uh, Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey was the number one pick. Patrick Mahomes was the number two pick by ADP average. Saquon Barkley, the number three pick. And Mike, oh, you know what else too with the 2020 class? Not just the scoring, which I'm still waiting to load because this is going back away as 2019. I don't think it's ever been pulled. But you know what? 2020 class was littered with what? Running backs. Everybody running backs. was really excited about the class of running backs too. Yeah. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, J.K. Dobbins, DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, Antonio yep. Gibson. It's a good class. I feel like Looking. I'm missing one. Trey Sermon. <laughs> Don't forget <laughs> Trey. No. Oh, oh. That wasn't Trey Sermon. That was Keyshawn Vaughn. He was uh, Trey Sermon was the year after. Tw- 21. Yeah. Those bullshitters. Right. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. All right. So go. Uh... Let's see. All right. Keep keep going to the ADP. Let's yep. start diving into it. By the way, I'm just looking at a standard PPR league, Mike. And uh, four point per passing touchdown. So, gr- granted, that plays into the warp here, but yes. like it's it's uh it's running back and receiver all the way through the first like eighteen spots in warp, um, and they're ahead of quarterback and four point per passing touchdown. So, I think you'll see probably a little bit of the overreactions from last season play a little bit into ADP. Believe it or not, too. Um. Chris McCaffrey, Patrick Mahomes, Saquon Barkley, Lamar Jackson, Michael Thomas. Those are your top five. So, okay, so you had Thomas at five. You had uh, Lamar, McCaffrey. Yeah, Michael Thomas is the number one wide receiver coming off the board. You had two quarterbacks in the top five and two running backs. Okay. Um, two quarterbacks in the, the top first, five is a big jump, though, right? Through the, through the first round, you had five quarterbacks in the first round. So we moved them up, five quarterbacks in there. What do we got now, six, seven, eight? I think nine? it's at least seven, it feels like. Let me pull it up. Don't don't let me speak out of turn. We got uh, nine now. Nine quarterbacks. Justin yeah. Herbert makes seven at the 109, and then A. Rich and Caleb Browning out the first round currently. Uh, there's six running backs in the first round. We have zero. <laughs> I hope we, we have zero. Bijan's sneaking still, but he's not sneaking. there. He's 202. Okay, sneaking, not there. Uh, only one wide receiver in the first round. That's that's the big change. Uh, we got three now, and we okay. like we we basically have four. Caleb and Amon Ross St. Brown have flip flop multiple times here. It looks like uh, through the through the first two rounds, eleven running backs, six wide receivers, six quarterbacks. We only got one other quarterback. In the yeah, top man. Two it, it took, and I think four that's going to be part of the discussion moving forward for how we value these guys the more middling quarterbacks right the ones that aren't because right now you got trevor lawrence at 210 in current startups mike is quarterback mm-hmm. 12 so we got double you're saying right yep wow 
And by the way, currently we have in the first three rounds, we have 17 with Drake May coming off at 310. Uh, through three rounds, nine quarterbacks, 15 running backs, 10 wide receivers. Okay, so the receivers start getting close. We're at 12 receivers right now. Um, but we had we have eight right now in the first two. Uh, through the first four rounds, 20 running backs, 16 wide receivers, and nine quarterbacks. So we have, Mike, eight eight running backs right now. Devon Chain at 407, the last one taken. You, we we will probably not see a lot like 2020's draft ever again. Like I think it was kind of very weird because through the first five rounds, Adam, only 13 quarterbacks. Really? So they were willing to push some of the guys up towards the top and then just kind of sprinkle in a few here, you know, through the next few rounds. But well, they uh, wrote everybody else off. You said how, how many rounds? Uh, through five court? rounds. And how many? 13. It's not right now. We're at yeah, eighteen. It it's not that crazy. It's really five not. Five quarterback. All right, I'll let you know when we get to eighteen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> trying to do some math in my head here. Pick seventy-eight. Whatever that comes in at. Your eighteenth cool. quarterback off the board. You, you already know my, where my math's been today. I, I got all cut. My screen's looking all crazy. Uh, what is it? Seventy-eight. Yeah, so seven and a half. Yeah, it's in the seventh round. round. Mm -hmm. Seventh round? Yep. Before you get your 18th one off the board. Oh, we got a super chat. Really? Well, let's go. From Shaq Diesel. Shaq Diesel. Appreciate it. Uh, we will get to your question, I promise. I got it here, start. Nailed it. Yeah, it took a while. It just kind of feel like they weren't really uh, pushing those quarterbacks up. Right. You may do it at the top, but you were doing it at the, the mid part, the back end, like filling out that super flex spot, right? And I think that kind of fits, like just Mike. Here, how can I just tell playing. you? Here's the thing, though. Right now, at least, like it's. I know your your point from 13 to 18, but after Goff goes off the board at the 411, we don't get it because Fields right now's ADP is totally off. We can kind of discount, like he's not going in this range anymore. He's he's dropped down to the six. He's going to keep mm -hmm. dropping. So the next quarterback really coming off the board. Is JJ McCarthy currently at the six oh seven, and that's not the seventh round, but it's it speaks more to, I think the difference at the top. Which it took a while to get the difference at the top too, right? Like we're talking about twelve quarterbacks in the first two rounds. That's that's seismically different than we've seen uh, ever. Yeah, I'm looking like how many in the uh, let's say top ten rounds, right? So that's one hundred and twenty players for me. How many quarterbacks you got? 28. 28 quarterback. Towards the end here, you got 20, 27. The top 100. Yep. That's Which wild. is so crazy to see it. Like, uh, QB 27 is actually Justin Herbert. <laughs> think about that. Yeah, I remember in 2020 getting him really late, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Disgusting. Like, that's uh, that's, that's, that's 12 rounds, Adam. <laughs> well, you know, Mike, it was funny. I, I, okay, I was actually going to ask you to do the math for me because I – I got him in the 13th, and I remember thinking that just seems criminal. So it was only really a round pass ADP. That's oh, uh, that, that's round 10. Round 10. Jesus, okay. My math. Right. My math is going Adams. I remember it felt like uh, it felt like a very big value at 13. It's right. it's the morning. It's the morning. I haven't had enough vodka. It's good Friday. So that's your that's your 2020 ADP. Um, okay. Let's go 21, man. Jonathan Taylor, I think, is the highest rookie off the board here too. He was a second round pick, end of the second. So right now we actually only have one. We have the one oh, the, I'm sorry, the one twelve, Caleb Williams, and then Marvin Harrison at the two oh three. So you're saying he didn't come off the board till the second round though, almost the end third. End of the end of the second round. He's picked twenty four. Jeez, it's wild, right? That is crazy. Uh, Joe Burrow was the number one overall pick, right? And he came off at what? Jesus, I'm trying to find him. QB nine, end of the third round. So the difference, Mike, isn't quarterback nine is Caleb Williams, but the difference is one twelve versus the three the three twelve. <laughs> right. All right, twenty twenty one. Let's see if we got any better. Do we got quarterbacks? Let's find out. We do got quarterbacks, Adam. Twenty twenty one. What were the receivers yeah. though, by the way, in twenty twenty? Because if all those running backs going, I'm curious where the receivers were. Yeah. So Michael Thomas was the only first round wide receiver. So we got three now. Okay. Uh, through the first two rounds, you only had six wide receivers in the first two rounds. DJ Moore being wide receiver six off the board. 
and wide receiver 36 or uh through, through three rounds you had 10 wide receivers okay so like kenny galladay mike evans type all right got it okay i'm just i just want to track a couple of those things all right let's yep. get it 21 2021 buddy uh, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson, five quarterbacks right off the board. <laughs> Is it, was this the year? This that's, is the getting, year we're like, that's getting Fuck. closer. That's getting closer. <laughs> now we're at nine now, but, uh, that's getting closer. Uh, Christian McCaffrey was RB one off the board at pick six. Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence. <sighs> you people don't remember that rookie Trevor Lawrence hype. Oh, yes. We, I, I remember it very vividly. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor was RB2, Saquon Barkley RB3, both of those at 9 and 10. Russell Wilson, Dalvin Cook, RB4, four running backs in the first 12 picks. Rounding out your top 12. Wow. Dalvin Cook on a second contract at this point, right? Uh, yes. 21, three years ago. Yes. Yeah, just what it went him, to it. Him and Joe Mixon were like right on that borderline. Kamara was right <laughs> about that same time, too, right? Yeah, that's kind of crazy to think about, Mike. Running backs on their second deal yeah. getting this high. Mm. Eight quarterbacks, four running backs, no wide receivers. There's that's your first the first round. two? Yep, first round. Second round is eight running backs, 13 quarterbacks, and only three wide receivers in the top 24 picks total. 21, Mike. This is actually, if anything, it might be – we didn't we didn't learn nearly enough because we had no receivers in round one and three in the first two rounds. That's actually wild. Yep, uh, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, DK Metcalf, top three wide receivers. And for all those people who think that Trey Lance, you know, fell off, uh, he was the nineteenth pick. <laughs> it's rookie. Smack dab in the middle of the second, baby. Let's go. We'll see where he falls the next year. Um. How about your first three rounds, Adam? Uh, it's kind of interesting. We fall in this. Kyle Pitts uh, comes in a tight end two, the 36 pick, just how that works out. Nice. So two tight ends in there. 11 running backs, 17 quarterbacks in the top three rounds, Adam. Hmm. 17 quarterbacks. Well, Mike, that's actually gone down. You can you can bar- well, you can can bar barely get 17 quarterbacks in the top five, can you? Right. Yeah. You get, you get, it, at, you get it at the fifth round. Sure, go. <laughs> and uh, six wide receivers. Think about that. Top three rounds, there's only six wide receivers gone. That's Mike. So you got running backs fall out of obviously fall out of favor since 21. That's looking back three years. Yep. 21. You're looking at the the receivers take a definitely take the biggest leap of all here. Um, the running backs obviously die currently, and then quarterbacks they actually go down a touch at the fifth round by one but it's it's closer to normal with with quarterbacks all right so through five rounds adam uh they had 23 quarterbacks taken compared to our 17 in 2024 so there you go quarterback about to come down how many wide receivers are through five rounds feels like a lot it's like uh, they still 24 24 there's only 14 of them here yep yep uh, by that time, through five rounds, Adam, you have had 18 running backs off the board as well. 18 running backs? 18 running backs. You got 11 right now. Barely. Jacob sneaks in at 11. So 2021. Uh, Warp-wise for 2020, was it like a big, heavy wide r- or running back? Yeah. I'm running it. I think it was. Feels like it was. Like obviously the quarterback's got a massive JT ball. smashed. Like JT smashed later. Towards now, the end of the year. Yep. You, obviously, we, we we know we've done the we've already done the research. The uh, you know we put liquid glue on a B um, for the QBs. Now, Mike, we're looking at yeah, uh, running back here in a standard PPR. It's not quite what receivers is. Now, granted, we didn't really know as much about warp either, but right, it's really high on the high end. Like the first the first six running backs look really good. So that'd be like uh, McCaffrey. JT Barkley. Yeah, let me let me pull it. Let me give you the names: Alvin Kamara, yep, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, okay. Jonathan Taylor. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor down the stretch too. That's actually wild. Do you remember how great Montgomery finished the season? Uh, he like he was like a league winner, running back five. Yeah. He was playing all those trash can defenses. Exactly. Yep. 
And then, like, Rashad Benny did it the next year. Like, you guys learned nothing. Speaking of which, James Robinson, Mike, running back six. Warp. Ooh, baby. UDFA. All right, let's look at 22, see if we get any big changes here, Adam. Okay. Uh, Through the first 12 picks, eight quarterbacks, two running backs, two wide receivers. So a little more balance. It's, that's a lot closer to right now, Mike. We're looking at, except for the running backs, obviously, because it's right. currently nine nine quarterbacks and three receivers. Uh, that's, that's a little bit more balanced. We're, we're kind of back on point. Chris McCaffrey, Johnson, Taylor still sneaking in first round running back picks. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to your first 24 picks, first two rounds, 13 quarterbacks, six running backs, only four wide receivers. So we still haven't really caught onto the wide receivers. Nope. Yet, and you and I were probably a big part of this shit. We were, we you, were fighting. You won't see, you won't see me take one in the first three rounds. We were fighting the good fight that uh, you know, <laughs> we we lost pretty. I'm heavily. not taking a wide receiver in the first three rounds. I remember saying that shit like a fucking idiot. Um, all right, how about your first five rounds, Adam? Uh, your quarterback number's twenty-one. Okay. Uh, eighteen running backs and seventeen wide receivers. And this is in through through five rounds, right? Okay. Through five rounds. Yep. All right. Currently. Even out a little bit. Currently, uh, again, we're talking about running backs 11, 24 receivers, and uh, 18, including the rookies for quarterbacks. All right. Let's go to 23. We're getting a little bit faster here because we remember these. We're getting a little bit closer. This, but This one feels like yesteryear. It does. One running back, two wide receivers. Nine quarterbacks. One running back. Oh, one running back. Bijan Robinson snuck in so, there, man. Yeah, it's like rounders, man, hanging around, hanging around. Bijan, Bijan, the like the poster child running back for uh, for us to <laughs> not to not hang on to that first round value, Mike. It's like all right, <laughs> we done killed the position. I think so. Uh, through your first uh, two rounds, you had eight wide receivers, three running backs, and 13 quarterbacks. Three running backs and how many quarterbacks? 13. Okay. And then what about five rounds? Uh, through five rounds, buddy, you had 16 running backs. Okay. 19 wide receivers. And 21 quarterbacks. Man. So, really, Mike, like, the first, the more I'm looking at it, what's really changed, especially the last two to three years, wide receivers have basically gone up in the first five rounds and yes. continually as we go up the board. Yep. The running backs have constantly fallen out, out of favor. So, now we're at yep. no running backs currently when you look at ADP. So, no running backs. We still have four in the first two rounds. Um, okay. But then after that, you get a huge drop off. We don't get. We only have eight in the first four rounds, Mike. Like that's that really shows you how much the running backs have come out of have fallen down. And then even still, because think about it this way: like when I'm when I'm thinking about it anyway, Mike, from a visual standpoint, if you have the running backs going to drop this far, that means that means realistically, both quarterbacks and receivers should be going higher. But quarterbacks are coming down in this year, so that means that the receivers are taking all those spots. Do you think going forward, then, it's a trend? Like, uh, l- listen, if you were to look at a graph for the running backs, yeah, at least if you're investing top three startup capital in, like, top three rounds, right? Oh, so top three rounds, yeah, yeah okay. That, that's a bad bet, right? You shouldn't be doing that, right? The graph, the stock market graph is going like this, and it's been going like this for six years. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you have to... Uh... Well, I mean, what more do you want, man? <laughs> six you... years are just a downturn. You're gonna have to for this for it to work out. You're gonna have to have that running back every year be a top warp option. That's the only yes. way it could ever work out. Like you're yes. betting, it's a, it's the odds are impossible. You know what I mean? So at least for me, like looking at it and watching this live without the actual data or the graph or the fancy colors. You know, I like to eat crayons, so I prefer the yellow ones. But without my crayons, um, <laughs> just looking at it, like running back specifically in the top three rounds, Adam. I don't think I'd be touching them now if you want to make the argument then maybe in the rounds you know five to ten like you might get some good values in there yeah for sure yeah i think i would do it 
uh, wide receivers, like you you said, they've been on this kind of like upward trajectory rocket ship, especially the good ones. So maybe that's where you want to start focusing on because if you miss out on those, then you're kind of in this tier of, I don't know. I like them, but, you know, <clears throat> could be bad, could be good. Maybe sometimes good, maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes shit. shit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the- quarterbacks, kind of the same thing. Like you want to get the good ones early. And then right now the trend has always kind of been like we are really thinning out in those mid-round quarterbacks. Like really where people are like, ah, what's the difference between this guy and the fucking dude I'm going to take in the 10th round? Probably nothing. Mike, you know what I can kind of, at least anyway from what I have and, and what you gave me from the rounds in 21, we had, uh, let's see, so sorry. Yeah, we had 21 quarterbacks, and now we're down to 17 um, in the first five. But it, it kind of feels like the quarterback horde, when, those optimal years, Mike, when you're t- talking about 24, 21 quarterbacks in the first five rounds, it was like, People basically needed to see their roster fill out in startups with that second quarterback to feel secure. And mm-hmm. I think that thing, currently anyway, I don't I can't predict the future, but currently it feels like that's people don't care about that as much anymore. You know what Could I mean? Could be. Could be. Yep. I think I think you're probably right in that where it does feel like the QB two is less of a concern for most people now. Yeah. I mean and then after, when we look at what happened last year, talking about overreactions or just being reactionary Correct. to the market, it people that Mike, I, I looked across a lot of my leagues, especially my lineup leagues. The teams that won, their quarterbacks were none of the high end ones. They're all mid, and then they had a lot of patchwork quarterbacks to to win. So right. it feels like that's going to play into making the quarterback too very much less important. And if you, I mean, if you were looking across a lot of your leagues on like who won, you were probably looking at my rosters, which is nice. <laughs> exactly. So, except, except, you know, in best ball. We're talking in best ball. We we've been told you to get a bunch of the mid quarterbacks. Mike yeah, Mike we, wants all the mid ones. You know all the middies. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a good idea going forward. But definitely for the running back takeaway, like I'm, dude, I'm probably good. You know when we were talking about startup strategy and how I said I might not take running backs or tight ends through the first ten rounds. Yeah, and then just throw a bunch of darts at the board. Why not? Like, at this point, why not? Now, to your point, maybe if you added in that little bit of that quarterback strategy too, Adam, where it's like, yeah, I want to get one of the, let's say it's 15 guys, right? I need one of these 15 that I feel really comfortable as my QB1, and then I'll kind of figure out QB2 and my my QB3 spot later on, even in best ball leagues, Adam. (laughs) So maybe your entire draft strategy right now in Dynasty Startups should be nail a quarterback, and then just fucking draft wide receivers until you're blue in the face. It's and then round 10, get your second quarterback. Round 11, maybe get your third quarterback. And then the rest of the draft is like tight ends, running back, tight end, running back, tight end, running back. Okay. Now, now I'm, I'm glad you say that because it's what's funny is, Mike, I was actually thinking about this as, as you're going through the years and just like looking. And then I'm looking at the current quarterback landscape. And look at the round three guys you're talking about. So – the ones that feel like could still fall down if just the way the market is reacting. Right. Brock Brock Purdy. Yeah. You, you I mean, you and I would both say there's we don't believe Brock Purdy retains third round startup value, right? I, I would say that he has a very unsafe floor. Okay. I think he he definitely could maintain it, but he's gotta come out and he's gotta repeat or, or come close but to what he did last isn't year. Isn't that what I'm we say about running impossible. backs? That's what we yes. say about running backs. He's got to continue his production yes. to stay there. That's the point. Yes. And again, Mike, then you're talking about um, Tua, which... I'm a big Tua lover, but yes, he is also on very unshaky, unstable ground where you could fall off a cliff and die. Now, here's the thing, Mike. Now, now think about this. The, the only two other guys going in this round, uh, Jaden Daniels, which I think there's no way that ends up staying there. Drake May, who right now the community split on for whatever reason. I'm not going to go down that whole rabbit hole today. Yep. Then Jared Goff, and then Mike, they don't get drafted till round six. The reason I say that is because it, the market's already basically saying there's a couple outliers, people still reaching for quarterbacks that probably didn't get one. Correct. But it's already speaking to exactly what you just said, which is get a top 12 quarterback, be done for a while. Yes. Now here's my question. That being said, when it comes to rookie drafts, if you go to the quarterbacks right now, if they – Climb up. So, like, for example, Caleb right now is in the first round. I don't think anyone has a debate. Me and you, no, nobody's going to have a debate on Caleb. No. 
I personally wouldn't even want to debate Jaden Daniels, but he's Correct. in third. I think that'll go higher. But then it's like, Mike, J.J. McCarthy's a six-round pick right now. And then uh, we got Drake Mays a third. So J.J. McCarthy in the sixth is a totally different conversation than what Drake May is in the third round. But Drake May in the third round, I think he's going to have to have a decent rookie season to maintain that he could still go up because he's a rookie and he's got he's going to have high draft capital. So he could go up, but – the floor I think we're starting to see is not necessarily as safe for these QBs. So that's where I think just from a market perspective, I'm not saying that it's right and that quarterbacks can't score and that these quarterback class won't be good. I'm just saying from a market perspective. Understandable. And I, I get exactly where you're coming from. And when we had this debate about quarterbacks last week, you know, my biggest thing is though the ceiling is much higher than the wide receivers ever will be. Right. That that part's for sure. The floor I think I mean, is just different because uh, – go ahead. I, was gonna, you, I didn't realize you were going to finish. I mean, it, just all things equal, though, like with a, with a quarterback, at least young guys, if you're looking at young guys, right? It doesn't even have to be rookies, Adam. Um, you could do this with Jordan Love. You could do Cheers, it with Joey. Stroud. You could do it with a lot of these guys, like a lot of these young quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. If they come out and absolutely smash, like, For sure. you know, 4,500 yards, close to, to the 40 moon. touchdowns. But you're talking about the the one, two, three, four, five pick. Like absolutely. Anywhere in there. No, no question about it. I mean, Marvin Harrison could come out this year and put up a fucking Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase level historic rookie season, twenty fantasy points per game. Dude's capped at the one hundred six or one hundred seven. Yeah, he's yeah exactly. He'll be a top. He'll he'll still go mid first probably because it's a ridiculous right. season. But to your point, he's not going to pass. He's not going to pass them top QBs. He just can't. Now, we haven't seen this quite yet. Like a uh, like top. We've come close, but we haven't like quite Let me seen ask it. You though. Full. What if, what I'm if, just saying it, the this the floor. We haven't quite seen it yet, so there's nobody to really point to yet. But let me say, like, what if uh you know, player X, I don't want to put any bad juju on these wide receivers, but player X, you know, just envision how we put value a name these. In it. Go ahead. Uh, the Malik name Nabors. actually kinda matters. All right. You, use Malik one of Nabors. the top three or not one of the top three, because I think it's a big difference. Malik Neighbors. Okay. Malik Neighbors comes out this year, and he has a – this probably would never happen, but he has a Quentin Johnston-level horrible season. Okay. What do you think happens to his dynasty value going forward? Quentin Johnston-level would be a lot scarier. Um, now, obviously, like – so let's take a look. What was the difference, Mike, in actual production at the end of the day from Jackson Smith and Jigba to Quentin Johnston? Because that, I think, is a – I think what we needed to do is – Mike, what I was actually thinking about, and I'm, it's funny you went down this path, so mind meld always tends to happen. Yep. I think we need to talk about – when we talk about quarterbacks, one of the things I think that's very different for these, at quarterbacks, when you start, if you're playing, there's not like a threshold that says, hey, this guy's going to retain value. Wide receivers don't have to actually matter in production, but they have to hit thresholds. They have to like meet certain bars. And I think it's important to kind of distinguish how – what that line looks like. So let's talk about it. What, what was JSN uh, versus JSN's versus uh, Quentin Johnson? Let's take a look at the actual numbers. So QJ was 67 targets, 38 catches, 431 yards, and two touchdowns. Okay, uh, that's 5. pretty bad. 5.5 5. fantasy points per game, which is wide receiver 84 in points per game. Yeah, it's pretty rough. According to player profile. Okay. Uh, JSN, on the other hand, uh, 93 targets. It's quite a bit. 63 receptions, 628 yards, and four touchdowns. Uh, 8.8 fantasy points per game, wide receiver 56. Okay, so you, you so, said that. So not like rosy or anything, but 3.3 <laughs> fantasy points per game difference. And what was some spots? What was JSN's final stat line? It was eight what? 93 targets, 63 catches, 628 yards, four touchdowns, 8.8 fantasy points per game. Okay. For wide receiver fifty six. So yeah, if it was Quentin Johnson level, Mike, I think there's there's uh, a totally different conversation from a league neighbors. If he has four hundred yards, and I say it because I don't, we've never really seen it. Like the closest I think maybe we've come has been Traylon, Traylon Burks. Yep. And Traylon, the funny, the crazy part about Traylon, Mike, is as soon as the off season hit, when his hype we were hoping was going to really take off. The combine was not as nearly as what we were hoping for. We, we were thinking right. create a player in Madden. 
the asthma stuff come around, which is that's still wild to me. But he also right. didn't he also didn't check that high early draft capital box. See, see, here's the fucking crazy thing, man. Um, he didn't he didn't have the games played, right? Yeah. But the fantasy points per game are just a little bit less than than uh, JSN. He's at eight point six <laughs> in his rookie. But but this is why I wanted to talk about this because JSN, Mike, I think is what you're looking at as like right now. Part of the spooky hours for JSN is. That production didn't quite get to what people wanted to see. Like you look mm-hmm. at Drake London's, you get to 700, 800 yards. Right. It, you you could still be wide receiver. What was he? Forty in points per game. It yep. doesn't matter. But as long as you're hitting threshold numbers, so I'm talking. I think about a 700 yard season. Um, he only had four touchdowns, Mike. There's obviously other metrics to look at, but the reason I say that is, look at Drake London as as an example of if you meet thresholds but don't matter in points per game. We'll defend you for years. And then all of a sudden, now he's going to be going into what year? Year three. Going with the, we are expecting a quarterback to come for him now. And he's yep. going, he's going almost top 10. Like that's, it's basically like if you don't have the floor fall out from under you, you're liquid gold at receiver if you're in that elite tier. The problem to your yes. point is if you were to face, if you face plant with that hard. type of draft capital, hard, you're going to fall. It's over for you. Interesting. Um, any other trends that you think maybe going forward? Do you think these wide receivers continue to run and like these mid rounds are just really packed with them? And I uh, do, man. I do. Okay. I do. And I think about it. Like, think about all these receivers being drafted right now. Yeah, it Eric feels. And I just did, Eric and I just did the ranking show for America's game yesterday, and it's like, Jesus, man. You know, uh, for me, it's like forty-seven or forty-six wide receivers. Like, when you rank them, you're like, geez, I kind of feel good about all these guys. Like, I like something about them. And then once you get past that, it, the the profiles become much more sketchy, and you're like, this guy could fucking disappear tomorrow and nobody would notice. So the the wide receiver class with these rookies baked in is fucking crazy deep. It's stupid deep. I mean, we're talking damn near 50 of these fucking guys, Adam. Like, 50. Think about it. 50 fucking wide receivers. That's a lot. Yeah, like, uh, I'm actually – I want to see Pickens um... – production in particular okay now he had he had 800 yards in his rookie season and had yep. had some moments so yep. he, again I, I think that's the thing Mike if you meet a non-meaningful production year two years in a row but you can create the the you basically can create the picture that all right they're developing they're they're not trash we we don't even expect them to really matter. It doesn't. It really doesn't bake into their price at all. They don't have to be a producer. Mm. If they come out early and produce, Mike, you know where they go? They go just behind the elite quarterbacks. That's what happens. Yes. Look at Puka. Puka's going just, wide receiver five. Just behind the young, pretty damn good quarterbacks. We don't have to say elite. Well, like, because right now, uh, Justin Jefferson, CD, and Chase are ahead of Herbert now, which... That, that seems insane to think Herbert was going ahead of Mahomes a couple years back. Mm-hmm. Now, the elite quarterbacks, to your point, that you, you can't pass it. Like um, I don't think that's coming, even if receivers keep growing in value, because you're going to take the elite quarterbacks. Because like, w- what we're finding, I think, as we play more, the gamers are getting sharper. You want you need if you can get one of the elite quarterbacks, that should cost an arm and a leg. Still, nobody would debate that. It's yeah, man. That's where that's the the edge in Superflex. Jack Nicholson's character from A Few Good Men. You know, you want me on that wall. You need me. <laughs> need on me that on wall. that wall. <laughs> yep. But like, people are like, wait a minute, why am I taking quarterback twenty, twenty three, like in round five? Why am I doing this? And I, to to their point, the only way I think you can make the case, Mike, is if you're taking. Again, like McCarthy, I like I'm not, I'm not a McCarthy guy. You you know that personally. You're not. I don't think you're there either. Uh, but if the draft on, on it, talent on, and like field, no, correct. Uh, but if the draft capital this, checks out, yeah. if the draft capital checks out and correct. he's a six round startup pick, Mike, I'll make the case that he's closer to his floor, even if unless he completely is like Josh Rosen. That's correct. the difference. So, yeah. and then and then accordingly in the, your start your rookie draft, that's where like I can't. I have a harder time with the non Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams really high because, to your point, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Marv are going to have to face plant to really fall. They're, we're going to make excuses for them no matter what happens. If, especially if one of them ends up going to like New England or the Giants, Mike, 
I'm kind of curious to see in that scenario what the threshold has to be for them. You know what I mean? Like to your point, we haven't seen one of these guys that gets really high draft capital go out and just, you know, lay an egg. So if one goes to New England, how bad would it have to be <laughs> for the retention to fall down? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd be curious to see that. I think eventually, though, you, you start to see it, and that's kind of been my, my big thing is we just we start to go, okay, we're good with these guys You know, when we push them down. Unless mm-hmm. you're crazy and you think Jerry Judy's having a massive breakout again this year. <laughs> but that's a, that's a guy you're taking in the 12th round. <laughs> yeah, not, he, Mike, by the way, I just want to make it with picks. When drafting picks, the 11-10. Still. It's, 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 it's banana land to me that he's not further down. Ooh. But no, all right. Let's get to the, some of the chats, super chats, and then we'll we'll bounce, bounce. out of this thing. Sounds good, good Friday buddy. Edition did an hour. Uh, it was kind of interesting. What are your takeaways we'll while I pull these up? By the way, what are your what are your takeaways? I think it's gonna we're gonna continue continue this trend, right? We still got a few stragglers holding on to running backs. You know, we still get pushback about dynasty trade value on running backs. I get it. You know, I love Saquon Barkley for fuck's sake. He plays for the Eagles. You probably love Jonathan Taylor. We love a Bijan. Like, we like these guys. And I've made the caveat where I say, like, it kind of feels like they're safe at him. But shit, in three years, I wouldn't be surprised if you're like, you don't see a running back in the top five rounds. Nobody gives a shit. Right? Now, Mike, we go to this point where there is such a risky asset that if I'm going to make that decision on my team, it's going to be a round five pick. And it's going to be nothing but quarterbacks and wide receivers and the occasional weirdos who still like tight ends, even though you probably shouldn't ever. Now, the one, the one, leagues. the one thing about the running backs currently in the second round in particular. So I'm talking the ones that are basically bucking the trend. You got elite profiles in bell cow situations. Yes. So it's th- th- like Kyron Williams, right? Uh, JT is now getting older in theory. Right, it's. But if you have Mike, if you get a top ten landing spot in a draft capital, so in today's NFL, they still decide to draft you that high, and we project you to have workhorse type opportunity. Different conversation. Now, Najee Harris though is, I think, is the the poster child for the opposite, where we don't think Najee Harris was as talented as B. John Robinson, as Brees Hall, probably. Um, but he had all that opportunity, so that was really what was putting him way, way up. You saw if he doesn't score, he's just like any other running back. And that's where basically if you don't have an insulated top 10 draft capital with elite, elite profile, it's – I'm not even saying it's a good bet there, but that's what you have to have to buck the trend now, right? Yeah. Like so. you have to do that. <laughs> we yeah. might have a few – you might have a few stragglers, right? But uh, looking at it still – I'm saying just my future projections uh, within the top five rounds, Adam. 11 running backs still feels like entirely too fucking many. Yeah, I mean. I, I'm I, saying it should probably in two, three years be at four. That's – it might be extreme, but I'm with you. It's It shouldn't be 11. It's high at 11. I think Jacobs probably. I think Kenneth Walker definitely. Um, I think probably ETN even. I think A-Chan. I could make the case, and obviously year to year will depend on who was good last year. But, yeah, I think probably to your point, more like six, more like four to six is probably realistic. And then it's like, okay, round six, let's go to town. Let's start yeah, Let's start let's taking all these guys. Let's right. do it. Let's I'm take them you. all. Yeah. It really feels like uh, if we're talking just uh, the first four rounds, like you should probably have 15 <laughs> quarterbacks. And you know why? Five wide receivers. <laughs> you know, do, you know, do you know why the six round feels different? I will tell you why. When you push those running uh, those receivers up now, if you push the running backs down to round six, Mike, because now you're taking them ahead of George Pickens. You're taking them ahead of Jaden Reed. You're taking them ahead of right. – th- that's a different conversation than passing on Rasheed Rice after he was looking like possibly the feature weapon for Patrick Mahomes. Like, Zay Flowers, Brandon right. Ayuk. You know, I'm Brandon not a Ayuk. Jalen Waddle fan, but Jalen Waddle. Sure. Right. You don't want to – passing on those guys for running backs is a very – very rich bet. It's like everything that we talk about, right? We're starting to slowly get there. I mean, Kyron was awesome last year at the running back as far as the workload and the production and warp, however you want to look at it, Adam. But I'm not a I'm not a Jalen Waddle fan, but you tell me who do I want, Kyron Williams or Jalen Waddle on my dynasty rosters right now, at the end of March? It's no fucking question. It's Jalen Waddle. Yeah. 
Um, it's going to be. All right. 10 team, super flex, start nine. Trying to down tier from Mahomes to Hurts. How much draft capital you need to add on to justify it? I'll be honest with you. In 10 team? Nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. Not, well, I'll take something, but like. I'll take Hurts straight up. I would take him in a 10 team, especially. Over Mahomes? I, I'll take him in a 12 team too, but in a 10 team, I will say this. Yes. You definitely want the Russian quarterback start nine in this format. That elite warp difference picker, I'd do it straight up if I had to. You get anything on top of your. I think just on market, you should be getting something. But to your point, in 10 team, I think there's a conversation that I'll just take the the upside that Hurts possesses. 12 team, I think. Or... 12 team, I think I'll take Mahomes' longevity given the, you... the, that he could end up having the same season in production. Could you get like a James Conner, something like that? That's uh, speaking of which, I got a video coming out. He's one of my five most disrespected players in startups, James Conner, um, with another opportunity to be the the one A in Arizona. But anyway, nice. yeah, we something like that. Super I think a, I think a second round. Um, we had Joey Cheese Sticks. Was that the yep. other one? That's the only two I think nope. we had. No, nope. we had a. Sh- oh, the Shaq Diesel one. Never mind. It was yeah, a two parter. Yeah, bad. that's what I put that one on. Yep. Gotcha. That was gotcha, it. Gotcha. 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 Nice. That's it. Joey That's all we got, man. What's up, Joey? Joey popped in last night where we were doing a little hell divers, spreading democracy. I love it. And this. whatever he was saying wasn't English in the Discord. <laughs> That's how we want you to come in to voice chats. You know. I was trying to figure out what language it was. Adam, we call we call that know. we call that bilingual. You know. <laughs> I, I don't know what he was uh, what he was sipping on, but it made him speak in tongues. That would be a good Friday if what I was sipping on whatever he had, you know. Um, I want to start. I want to start. It's a good Friday. We get out of here. We'll have some lunch let's and do that. Uh, brunch. Kick the weekend off right. Yeah. Uh, any any final points or takeaways? Uh, given taking a look at this and where we're going in the in the market, and we'll get out of here. No, I like it. Um, uh, shout out to DLF for keeping track of it, you know, and really helping out the dynasty space. So I always give him credit. But I really do enjoy the fact that we have so many ADP trackers now. Uh, we got a website like Keep Trade Cut too, where you can like go back. But going back to like that 2018, like the first like ooh, super flex ADP, like the first iterations, feels really good to to have something like that still in the in the works. It'll be interesting now that we have uh, better ways of tracking it. At least in my opinion, no no shot, no shade. But listen, tracking real drafts is much more efficient and better. <laughs> bigger Thank sample you, T- sizes. Thank you, T Rock. This is the new usual digs, by the way. I prefer that over, you know, four or five mock drafts, you know, one a week as yeah, far I'm, as my ADP to make 100%. determinations off of. So now that we have uh, bigger, better, faster, better data ways of tracking ADP, it'll be interesting to see now in the next, I mean, we just looked at six fucking years of data right here. It's what funny, the Mike, next six years hold, Adam? It's funny the the point you're making about ADP. I think it speaks to just the game of Dynasty as a whole. And what is it? The evolution, we're getting, people are, are paying more attention. There's way more tracking of everything. There's, I'd say on average, Mike, the gamer is just sharper. That doesn't mean that every sharp, I think any sharp gamer is capable of making a terrible, terrible trade. So, like, that's where I. I do it all the time. That, that's where I'm like, oh, in sharp leagues, this doesn't happen. What are you talking Bullshit. about? That 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 is a terrible analogy, in my opinion, Mike, because what league? what league are you talking about? I, I've been a part of any league with any person that you think is a analyst or not. I've seen all of them make bad trades. I've made some of the worst trades that I've literally come across, Mike. I look at yes. a trade I made last year. I'm like, Hol-. I almost nuked this entire team in a single trade that I yep. made. You know, like. But by and large, people are getting smarter. There's better tools, and I think that is kind of why I also try to like the future cast. And to your point, like, how, where is it going to go next year in startups? And I think this trend is only going to continue because, Mike, the quarterbacks, they offer, to your point, the elite ceilings, but you're probably only capturing that with 8, 12 at max quarterbacks in super flex leagues, right? So that's where I think um, understanding that, but understanding that that whether it's right or wrong, there's an inherent feeling of safety for these receivers, and you see how many are – 50 receivers, Mike, in the first nine rounds – like I'll, I'll also be interested to see too if maybe we get a little like house of cards things going with the receivers i don't i don't predict it but you know at some point is there almost does it become too many does it become like fuck 
Like, what's the difference between this guy and this guy? Nothing. If the per- it, we started to see it, right? Like, if you do your rankings, right? We talked about our wide receiver rankings, similar to startup draft. Like, really, what is the, the difference between your wide receiver 17 and your wide receiver 36? That would be one tier for me. But it's I have like twenty seven or five somewhere in that range. You know, you know what three. I mean. Like, yeah, I'm with you. Like, like, do we start to see a little bit of a house of cards things where it's like, <clears throat> if I were to make a pros con list of all those wide receivers in there, like, what's the difference between the two? I couldn't come up with a lot of like. The good difference is to sell you on. The difference is some people have their reasons for believing. Get into the next tier, and right. you look across the landscape. That's one thing that's currently that belief uh it can the land of make-believe mike it can be put on 40 receivers still at this time so everyone's going to have their reasons for why it can happen and if we're going to give them three years to prove it like for example think about drake london drake london is the if he goes out and smashes next year do you know how long the retention is going to be for some of these guys yeah i mean it's it's going to be ridiculous we're going to give these guys three years and it's like year three Three years is a lifetime in Dynasty for those that want to go back. Think about five years ago's data. We're drafting retired quarterbacks. Yeah. Like, well, think about that. Five, five years ago, we were still, you know, we were doing it for Keenan Allen and Terry McLaurin and, like, these guys who have never actually done it, done it, other than yep. DJ Moore this last year. Right. They've never actually done it, done it, but we like the profiles. My biggest issue is, like, as we start to get more data and more people are paying attention, you can go back and you can look and have that kind of stuff, especially with receivers. Do people realize that at some point, when do you stop just making the, the DJ more excuse and you just go like, yeah, this fucking probably ain't happening. Like, I'm good, man. You know you and I were, like, the biggest, like, you just wait. <laughs> you just wait till he gets a quarterback. But look at Terry McLaurin. We would say you just wait till he gets a quarterback. He's the other side of the coin, like the other guy where you're like. You know what's crazy, still though? Still ain't got one. Can I, t- can I tell you where that the, the wild part about that argument, Mike, is that Terry McLaurin, still an eighth round startup pick. Yeah. So wh- if that's the floor, oh my gosh, like that. I'm but, just think about that. It's. I'm not even saying it's right. I'm not. I'm just saying to the point of the market. I don't think unless we start getting more advanced data on what is the most predictive to go to the elite tier. And that's like the next thing. Until that comes about, I I think this crazy gigantic jumble will stay here. But you guys, let us know. Let us know in the comments, man. Let us know what you thought of the Good Friday uh, live stream. Let us know what you think yeah. of the the old data and how you're going to change the new data. I hope everybody has a great weekend with whatever you're celebrating. Just enjoy the time off. Enjoy the time with your family. Or if you don't have a family and you're a loner which I don't mind either. I like to be alone sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I wish my family would take more vacations without me. <laughs> Absolutely, buddy. You know? <laughs> Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, appreciate everybody. We'll see you all back here same time, same place next week for the 40 Chess Dynasty podcast. And I almost forgot to have Adam and just do the thing. Remember, things. when your league mates are playing chess, play 40 chess. We're out of this Love thing. Y'all. Peace. Peace.